Let's talk about factoring by grouping. The steps for factoring by grouping are to first group the first two and the last two terms. Usually you're going to see polynomials with four terms. Sometimes there might be more than that, but traditionally you'll see ones with four terms. They need grouping. Group the first two and group the last two. Then take out the greatest common factor from each binomial and then write out your factors. You're going to put the two greatest common factors that you took out together as one factor and then you're going to bring down one of the common factors. You can always check your answer by multiplying it back together again to see if you get the polynomial that you started with. Let's work some examples together. So here for example one we have a polynomial of four terms. I'm going to group the first two terms and the last two terms using parentheses. And then we look at the first two terms and we take out their greatest common factor. So we have 14x cubed and 21x squared. The greatest common factor I could take out would be 7 and then they both have at least two x's. I would have left 7x squared and 2x would give me back the 14x cubed. So that's how I can make sure I've got the right number inside my binomial. And then 7x squared times 3 would give me back 21x squared. So I'm always checking to make sure that I'm rewriting, but I'm not changing what I was given. On this next binomial, you want to take out whatever sign this third term has. So if it's positive, you take out a positive. If it's negative, you take out a negative greatest common factor. So I'm going to take out a positive and then 16x and 24. They both would divide by 8. So I'm going to take out 8 and I would have left 2x because 2x times 8 would give me back the 16x and I would have a 3 because 8 times 3 would give me back 24. Notice you have a common factor. The 2x plus 3's match. So to write your answer you put together the greatest common factors that you took out. So 7x squared plus 8 becomes one of your factors. And 2x plus 3 is your other factor. If you wanted to check your answer, you could multiply that back together using the FOIL method or the box method or the distributing method. And you should get back what you started with. Let's do example 2. So here's another polynomial with four terms. Group the first two terms and the last two terms, and then you work on this one first, and then we'll work on that one second. So the greatest common factor between 10w cubed and 16w squared would be 2w squared. Then I would have left 5w because 2w squared times 5w would give me back 10w cubed and I would have 8 because 2w squared times 8 would give me back 16w squared. Always look at this third term and take out the sign that's there. So I need to take out a negative and then look at these other terms. So like 15 and 24. They would have a 3 in common. So I take out negative 3. So negative 3 times what? would give me back negative 15w. So I need 5w so that they'll multiply to give me back what I started with. Then I have negative 3 times 8 would give me back negative 24. Notice again I have a common factor. In grouping that should always happen. If that does not happen you might have to go back and regroup the terms. For instance you could put the first term and the third term together. Just reorganize your polynomial. But most of the time it works to group the first two and the second two together. So for my answer I write down 2w squared minus 3. The two terms I took out become my first factor and my second factor is the one that they have in common. Again, you can multiply that back together again to check your work. Now let's look at two more examples. So in example three, again, we could group the first two terms and the second two terms. 
and we can take out the greatest common factor. So 6n cubed plus 8n squared would have 2n squared in common. So we could say 2n squared times 3n would give us back 6n cubed. And 2n squared times 4 would give us back 8n squared. Now we look at the second two. We always want to take out this sign, so it's going to be positive. But 3n plus 4, they don't have a, com a common factor other than 1. So if that's the case, you do write the 1, and then bring down 3n plus 4. And you notice the 3n plus 4 actually is our common factor still. So now we have our answer as 2n squared plus 1. The two factors we took out go together, and 3n plus 4 comes down as our other factor. And we have one more example. Let's group together the first two terms again and the second two. This one has some more variables, but it works the same way. So let's look at 30m to the fifth and 24m cubed n. We could take out 6m cubed, and we would have left over 5m squared, because those would multiply back together again to give me 30m to the fifth. And 6m cubed times 4 n would give me back 24 m cubed n. I always take out the sign of the third term, so we have a minus, and then think about 35 and 28. They would each divide by 7. Then they both have n squared in common. So we would have left 5 m squared they would multiply again to give me back what I had before, and 4n would give me back the negative 28, because negative 7 times 4 would give me back negative 28, and n squared times n would give me back n cubed. So I just have to write my answer. We always end up with the two binomials, 6m cubed minus 7n squared are the two terms I took out, and 5m squared plus 4n is my common factor. So I bring one of those down.